second and go over what BCC is and what it should be used for. So I'm in Outlook here and I've made a new message. And in an in a Outlook message, a new email, you have a two section, a CC section, and a BCC section. Now, by default, mine is not showing, but you can simply add it by going to the Options tab along the top, clicking the BCC button, and it pops it in. I'm going to add someone to this BCC. Here we go. So, this email, if I were to put in a subject and a body, of course not required, but let's just say I was going to put those in. This is how it would work. When, let's say, Jennifer received this email, um, it would show me in the CC section, and it would not show anyone in the BCC section. So the BCC is blind carbon copy. So essentially, anybody that you add to the BCC cannot be seen by anyone in the two section or the CC section or other people in the BCC section. So what that means is if I was going to send a mass email out to all, let's say 200 of my clients, and I didn't want them to have each other's email addresses because that's considered a bit impolite to share people's email without uh, asking. So I would actually add all of those people to the BCC section and send out the email. If I wanted to send an email to Jennifer and myself, CC'd and Rob, but not have Jennifer or myself see that it was sent to Rob, then the BCC section can be used for that. That is kind of considered a little bit unethical, unethical um, or impolite, uh, but it can be used this way. And the danger you are running is that when Rob receives that email, if Rob were to reply to all, then these two recipients, recipients would now know that originally this message had been sent as a blind carbon copy to Rob. So something to look out for. Um, you can use it in correspondence if you want to. That's what it's, I mean, this was originally intended for. Um, typically now it is used when you're doing a large mail out and you don't want everyone to have or see each other's email addresses. That's what you use the BCC for.